Okay, ladies and gents, what up? It is your favorite Asian robot right here, hopefully your favorite Dark Tide YouTuber and partner, and today I'm going to teach you how to construct a Tempestus Scion build for your veteran sharpshooter. This build actually works in Maelstrom, and it features your favorite Recon Last Gun, which several people have been asking me to make, and honestly, it wasn't viable until now. Check this out. All right. Now, first and foremost, before we actually go into this, I'm going to have to tell you who the Tempestus Scions are and what they do. Oops, sorry, wrong image, wrong image. There we go. The Tempestus Scions, all right, or as they're known in low Gothic stormtroopers, are the elite special forces of the Astra Militarum, okay? They basically have hotshot last guns, which we're going to use the recon last gun to imitate. We're going to be using the Mark VI model specifically. And they also have high accuracy aided by their Carapace Armor's integrated and distinctive Omni Shield Helm, which you have to buy the skin for, okay? And they have a targeting system. So we're going to imitate that with the Marksman's uh, focus ability. And we're going to imitate the protection of Carapace Armor with Voice of Command. So with this build, you will, and also, also you'll have a power sword, so you will literally be a Stormtrooper. And again, we have cleared Auric Maelstroms. There is an entire stream dedicated to that. Watch it with the link below. Okay? All right. Now, how does this build work and what makes it so good? Well, first and foremost, by taking advantage... Now, it has one weakness of being ammo inefficient, but assuming that you tag a target and give it bonus damage, it's going to go down really fast. All right? The Vlad also has very good um, ammo efficiency, well, decent ammo efficiency, if you use, if you use Deadshot, but... Thanks to the Headhunter perk and the relative accuracy at close ranges, you can definitely storm out areas like this. Otherwise, you want to crouch and shoot targets in the head. All right, to take advantage of Headhunter. Um, your ammo is not going to go down by all that much, but it will still get consumed. However, thanks to the perks we're going to use, you're going to take down monstrosities like water and even Carapace Armor targets aren't going to present a challenge so long as you hit the head and you have your crits on. Okay? All right, now... Let's talk about how to construct this properly. Okay. Gonna switch to a different music for this one. And let's start with the skill tree. Now, first of all, you gotta look as cool as this, alright? I will not accept anybody that is not in full Tempestus Scion dress. Now. In order to construct this build, here's what you're gonna need. I'm gonna camera vanish so we can go through this together. The standard part of the build is the close order drill confirm kill. This is your means of restoring toughness, as well as preventing toughness damage when you're in coherency with allies. Take your stamina boost, toughness boost, shredder frag grenades, because veterans, both in Dawn of War and, sorry, um, the Kasukin squad in Dawn of War use the shredder frag grenades, but you can use crack grenades if you really want to. It may cost you an extra point, though, to get here, so just be wary of that. If you really want the fully authentic feeling, you can go with crack grenades, but hey, shredder frag grenades are fine. Range damage boost here, catch a breath, as per normal. Now, you can also go with get back in the fight, but I prefer catch a breath. Survivalist, of course, because you need to restore your ammo in the field. Reload boost. You've got your toughness damage reduction here. Demolition stockpile, replenishing your grenades so you can keep using them as a proper veteran should. Voice of command to imitate the protection of Carapace Armor. Duty and honor, of course, to give yourself extra protection, imitating Carapace Armor again. You've got your suppression boost here. Melee damage boost, duck and dive. All right, this is extremely important because when you avoid range attacks, you will get stamina back. Stamina regeneration boost here, and then you've got onslaught right here. This will allow you to inflict brittleness on a target up to 40% brittleness, all right, when you stack 16 times. And this is so good for just terminating bosses, crushers, heavily armored targets, everything. It applies on anything that you use, not just your range attacks, but of course, it is most useful for your, for your recon last gun, yeah? Okay, from your suppression boost, you want to get keep your heads down. Now, this is only because the, the um, recon last gun does not have range attack suppression. However, you can also use for the Emperor if you want to. It's up to you. But by using this, you can actually suppress enemies fairly easily, get them all ducking. So you can spam spam them a lot easier and keep them suppressed. You've got Tactical Awareness. Now, I figured that this would be more authentic since they should be afraid of a Stormtrooper. But you can also go with For the Emperor, okay? Grab Tactical Awareness to cool down your abilities faster. Grab Iron Will so that you have reduced toughness damage if you're above 75% toughness. Toughness boost here. Rending Strikes is a must-have for this build. This is what makes it so good. All right, 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but the difference is felt most keenly. Do you remember the Hellbore experiment where I showed you guys that without Rending Strikes, the Hellbore does so much less damage? This is exactly why you need Rending Strikes, okay? Um, bring it down is extremely important because this will boost your damage versus Ogrins and Monstrosities, so this is how you kill Crushers. Focus target to imitate having the Omni Helm. And of course, if you use a proper targeting system, you can always apply five stacks to a key target 
damage them, kill them off, and you're all good to go. Now, unfortunately, you cannot get target down and restore stamina and toughness with this, but that's a sacrifice you have to make with this build, all right? You should restore enough from Voice of Command, though. I've been running this build all night and literally no problems with this, all right? But if you really, 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 really want target down, which is generally considered a crucial part of this build, you may have to give up Shock Trooper, which I am not keen on giving up, all right? Now, over here, you want range damage boost, uh, suppression immunity, dead shot, Fully loaded and shock trooper. Now, precision strikes I know is a great talent, but it's not going to benefit you on body shots, and sometimes your shots will hit the body. So, precision strikes is worse than focus target, and focus target benefits your whole party. Now, suppression immunity. A lot of people are very like, hey, should you have it? Should you not have it? Okay, what I'm going to say in regards to this is that, um, quite frankly, I personally believe in suppression immunity because your dead shot goes away really fast. All right. And without suppression immunity, as soon as that gunner is shooting you, your, your aim is going to go all over the place. And considering you have to spam and sort of beam targets with this thing, you kind of want your suppression immunity. So make sure you have this. All right. It's quite important. Okay. That is about it for the build. That is it for the skill tree. All right. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Now, let me talk about what I'm going to do with the weapons. In order to imitate the Tempest Scions, you are going to have certain weapons in this build. And now, I will pause the music so I, so I can go through this in greater detail. Alright? When it comes to your weapons for this loadout, I am very specific. Okay? Unlike with several of the other builds that are more universal and have options, you don't have any options with this. Why? You're a Tempest Scion. You should have a Power Sword. Okay? Now, if you don't have a Power Sword, you can use the Chain Sword. Uh, the Mark 13 G would be just fine. Um, but realistically, if you really want to get into the feel of the Tempest Scion, you gotta have a Power Sword. You're an elite, you're an elite Stormtrooper. There's no reason why you shouldn't have this, okay? Damage done yielding enemies and Carapace armed enemies is your perk choice. You want to have Power Cycler and Brutal Momentum as well as your blessings. Why? Brutal Momentum will allow you to ignore enemy hit mass on a weak spot kill, which is fantastic. And Power Cycler gives you two extra chained energized hits, which is, again, fantastic. So you want both of these. Stat-wise, what is important? Damage, mobility, finesse. Okay, these three are the most important. Cleave damage, not as important, but it's pretty helpful. And cleave targets is totally unimportant, but anything above 60 is fine, all right? Okay, there you go. That's it for your melee weapon. What about your ranged weapon? In order to make this build really work and really come together, you are going to need to get yourself a very specific recon last gun. You are going to need to get yourself the Mark 6D, okay? Now... The Mark II has better ammo efficiency, as I've talked about in my video, but the Mark 6D imitates a um, hotshot last gun a lot better and also has a slightly faster TDK. But you're going to need a few specific things on this. There is no room for compromise. You're going to need Headhunter and Infernus on this. Okay, Go for the head because if you hit the head, you have more critical chance, restoring more ammo with uh, Shock Trooper, and Infernus will burn out most targets, including bosses. Now, in terms of your perks, what you need is range critical strike chance. The other perk, ideally, you want to have unyielding. If you can get unyielding damage on this, you will have a great time. Unfortunately, I was unable to roll a recon last gun that had unyielding damage, but ideally for boss killing, change this range damage elites to unyielding, okay? 25% damage versus unyielding and bosses are going to melt. You're going to literally see everything melt, but I haven't really had time to roll a perfect last gun. I actually rolled this one today and said, hey, I'll stick with it. Uh, in terms of important stats, now, because the blessings are more important than your perks, other than critical strike chance, these take priority. But, if you could get perfect perks and blessings, oh, you'll have such a great time. Now, in terms of stats, damage, ammo, stability, um, kind of crucial, but stability is really not going to help you that much with this particular gun. My shots still go all over the place, so any stability above 60 is fine. You don't have to get 74 like me, because I had one at 79 and my shots were still going all over the, all over the place. So, realistically, I would prioritize ammo, number one. Uh, damage, number uh, sorry, damage number one, ammo number two. Mobility above 70 is good enough. Why do we even have mobility in the first place? Because if you recall in the talent tree, all right, you've got this little talent here called Duck and Dive which allows you to gain stamina on avoiding range attacks. You kind of want to do that in the field. So when you are actually applying this, right, when you're shooting, you're not exactly going to be shooting like this. You'll be, do you'll be dodging so that you restore stamina against range attacks, and then you can spam more dead shot that way. So just be aware of this, all right? This is what that entire thing is for, to get into the real Tempestus Scion vibe again. 
So that is why mobility is somewhat important on your recon last gun. Collateral, totally unimportant. And stability, like I said, anything above 60 is fine because your shots are still going to go everywhere. Okay? So anything above 60 is fine, but if you can roll above 70, that's good. But prioritize damage and ammo. I would rather have had higher damage and ammo, but every recon last gun that I rolled today did not have my ideal perks and blessings or was just absolute doo-doo. So it wasn't exactly the greatest situation. I can tell you that. Okay, that is it for the recon last gun. Now, last but not least, what are your curios in order to become a true Tempest Scion? Okay, what you're going to want is toughness, stamina, and max box health. Lucios. <laughs> what, Kaz? I said a box of Lucios. You nerd. Okay, she's in the background. <laughs> she's supposed to She's supposed to be quiet, but you know, she couldn't resist. Could you? I couldn't. No, I couldn't. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, for the free right. curios, what you're going to need... Yes. For the curios, what you're going to need is 16% toughness, stamina, and max health. Now, of course, you want the ideal 17% toughness and 21% max health, but as long as you've got a 3 stamina, you're all good to go. Now, in terms of your perks, your perks are going to vary a little bit. You want at least two gunner resistance perks, okay? 20%. Do not compromise on this. Now, you can have a third if you find that the gunners are really shredding you, but two should be enough. Because number one, they don't protect you against reapers. Okay, in Auric Maelstrom, you're going to have three, four Reapers shooting at you. They don't protect you against Reapers. And they mostly protect you against the Scab Gunners and Dread Gunners, which are also, also equally numerous. But if you've got four or five of them spamming you, even with 60% Gunner Resistance, you are still going to die. So just be very careful and aware of that. Rather, uh, after I've got my two Gunner Resistance perks, what I go for is Toughness Regeneration Speed. I've got at least two of those going. This helps me improve my... Toughness Regeneration in Coherency, which you should be in Coherency with your allies as a veteran. And on the Toughness Curio, I've got Extra Toughness. On the Stamina Curio, I've got Stamina Regeneration and Block Efficiency and Extra Toughness as well here. Um, on the Max Health Curio, I've got Extra Toughness. All right. Why so much Extra Toughness instead of Max Health? Please remember that you have a talent called Iron Will, where as long as you are above 75% Toughness, you take 50% Reduced Toughness Damage. By having more Toughness... All right, you will have the window where you take 50% reduced toughness damage is larger, which again is really great for surviving gunners during their initial spam. All right, it's also great for surviving a lot of shooters, things like that while you're trying to break down hordes, break through hordes. So don't hesitate to abuse Iron Will. It will be your saving grace. Okay, so use and abuse that heavily. And that is about it for the curios. So that brings us to the end of this build. Now, let me talk a little bit about strengths and weaknesses before I let you go. In terms of weaknesses, we've already covered a major one. This build is quite ammo inefficient. So you are going to either have to play smart or conservatively. If you watch the stream where I played this for the entire stream, there were situations where I started getting low on ammo. I pretty much switched to melee, deleted a couple of specials, and slowly built up my ammo reserves, being very trigger disciplined with my shots. It can be very tempting to spam down all your enemies, but as long as you don't have dead shot, that's going to be a problem. So get used to crouch firing, aim for the head a little bit, also learn how many shots it takes to burn out an enemy, use a little bit of dead shot you know, against big armor targets, use a bit of dead shot and then spam them down normally, and try to let your burn do a little bit of the work, okay? Don't have, don't forget to also tag against bigger targets where you can go for the head quite easily, you want to do that. Against bulwarks, you're, you're not going to do anything against their shield, that's where you got to use your shredder grenades, right? This is why I like shredder grenades because they can deal with multiple bulwarks instead of just one. Of course, ideally, you can go through targets from around the back, but not everyone's going to be helping you. Now, the Power Sword is also a great armor breaker. Make sure you use the push attack to really shred off uh, Carapace armor targets like so. Alright, but if you mark targets, you will do even more. So, don't hesitate to mark. Oops, sorry. And it'll... I, I mean, I accidentally hit it, but it's a guaranteed two-shot if you mark. For muties, same principle applies, especially in muti waves. What you want to do is you want to get a real good poke and then strike them down. Alright? That'll kill them even without any maniac perks. You can also just two swing the head. Alright? Even without maniac perks, this is not a problem. So that's why I dropped the maniac perk for my uh, power sword and went for unyielding. Alright? That basically settles it for this. The other weakness that you're going to probably experience is ragers. Okay, but you can burn them out fairly easily. Uh, they do take a little bit to kill, so just be aware of that. You will be spamming a lot of ammo at them, so try to mark a rager, spam ammo at it, mark another rager, move on, that kind of thing. It will it will deal with them, but 
Um, if you get caught up with a reload, especially when there's a whole horde of rangers coming at you, make sure you have voice command. Make sure you have some grenades ready to deal with them. These are some major weaknesses of this build. But other than that, you can basically roleplay as a Tempest to Scion. And it's pretty fun. Like I said, we did an entire stream on it. It was awesome. All right. So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, especially if you enjoyed my content. If you want to see more from me, right now we've got a special incentive for viewers. Okay. If during any particular week, all of my videos, not just my Dark Tide videos, but if you manage to get all of my videos above 10k views for that week, within that one week, I'll give away $100 on Sunday. All right. This is a fun little challenge that we're doing for the community. So view, 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 guys. Thank you very much. And before we go, let me give a special thanks to my top channel members. But I'm also going to thank Kaz. All right. I know she said it was a joke last time, but I'm going to give a special thanks to Kaz. Thank you for always being around. My dear. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Starting at the top oh, channel. <laughs> starting with our top channel members. We have Nisk and Bon Schwanon at the only fan level. It is Nisk's second month as an only fan. Damn. Hardcore. All right. Arcane Silver, Michael Washington, and Death Dawning are all plus ultra. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to our prestige robots as well. Thank you to the following individuals. Thank you to Zach NFG, Jellotello, Nada Doge, BVS Fang, Vikram Bao, Rapto, Akue, Chanel Name, Six Gun, Yuri, and Rogue Assassin. Thank you guys so much. And thank you to all of our honored robots as well. Here are the following individuals. Jareth Thompson, Vanek, Super Gear, Nathan Pyle, Tim Rodel, Benjamin Savage, Wild Hunt, Kaloom, Rev Soul, Chris, Uncontrolled, Orange Shivs, Nightshade, Matchstick Jim, Gator Guy, Timbo, Symbol Spider, Albert1990, Tuan Gwen, Some Dummy Head, Lu Fan, The King, Curry, Phil, You Know, Commander Farsight, Atomica, Devin Lashin, Muki Mocha, Rena, Nathan Strong, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Sayed Asad, Code CMF, and Kami SMH. Thank you guys so much for all of your love. Thank you to all of our cool and weird bots as well. I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Y'all have a good time now. Get you later.